everyone, it's me, I'm back again with some more Itch IO games and today I'm playing one that I'm really excited about, like, I mean that art is just gorgeous, I don't really know what the game is going to be like, but it's called A Mortician's Tale, a death positive game where you play as a mortician tasked with running a funeral home, which just sounds like something I will get such a good time out of. Also by the way you can see I was playing Retrace, the game from one of my earlier videos, absolutely get Retrace. like. Laws Talks approved, five stars, I loved that game. Like I didn't expect any of the games in this to be like something that I really like loved. That game was so good, I highly recommend it, I had such a good time, it's so clever, it's it really well like it really impressed me, I wasn't expecting it to be that good so get retraced but let's find out what our mortician tale is like. It's apparently an hour long um, according to the description so let's see hopefully it launches or this is going to be incredibly disappointing <laughs> laundry bear oh that's cute headphones recommended i actually don't know if i've got the sound on Oh I do, that's good to know. Because I had the t sound turned down yesterday. Really loud though. Do you have a volume option? Turn it down just a little bit because my ears. This looks so pretty though and it sounds pretty. I'm excited for this. Right, start new game. Ooh, September 14th, 10.15am. I'm taking it that's a saving icon in the corner. Look at how cute it looks! Okay, is it point and click or are we using controls? Point and click, I think. That colour palette is gorgeous. Ooh, okay. Oh god, there's so much going on. Wow, okay. Welcome to our new funeral director, from Matthew Jeffrey to Charlie. Welcome Charlie, nice to meet you. My name's Matthew and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you and helps with some more heavy some of the more heavy lifting. Ever hear that joke about a hair driver? I'll tell it to you when I come by in a bit. Looking forward to working together. I think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. She wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Good cheers and good luck. Matthew J, Funeral Director, Rose and Daughter Funeral Home. From Amy Rose to Rose and Daughter Staff. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Charlotte, or Charlie, as she told me she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career here with us at Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. Please take the time to make Charlie feel at home within our little family. We'll have a nice catered lunch this afternoon so we can all get to know each other a little bit better as well. That sounds like something my old work would do. That is exactly. My old work loved a bloody catered lunch. Um. Okay, instructions. Hello Charlie, well you're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. In your office slash preparation room, you'll find your cremation station, the cremation station, oh my goodness, cremulator station, embalming station, and obviously since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experience working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best, Amy Rose. Isn't Amy Rose that girl from Sonic? Who did this? Huh, I guess my subject- oh, alright. Good luck you, smart and beautiful babe you. Or beautiful and smart, I can't read. 5am, alright. I guess my subject lines to you should start being a bit more professional now, now that we are business professionals. I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature, that is so me. I love that you were able to land this gig straight after graduating, it sounds super cool. I didn't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing until now. It's, guess it's not something I really think that much about. I should look more into this, learn about your learn more about your world and industry because as I said, you're now a serious professional. Speaking of being a professional, my museum gig is amazing. I can't believe somebody paid me to move to London and not London O-N, oh, London, Ontario, serial colour capital of Canada to work in a museum. Like, take that everyone who said I couldn't get a job with that art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when we Skype. My stories require you to see my face and that you hear my excellent British accent impersonation. Also, I signed you up for Funeral's monthly newsletter. Consider it your graduation gift. I love you. I'm super proud of you, gift. Love you, love you, love you, Jen L. Aww. Aww, the London Pathology Museum. Ooh. Hello, Charlie. Hope you're settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you're really friendly and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to a sense of humour. 
Your first ability is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly woman who dies suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier if that's possible. That being said, although you'll not be embalming Mrs. Garcia, I do think it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I like to encourage the funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Mrs. Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon. And we've got... Dear Amy, we're happy to be with Rose and Daughters from my mother's funeral. We understand that there are usually procedures that must be followed in these situations, but if you could kindly not embalm my mother, that would be greatly appreciated. Oh. And we will proceed with a closed casket for the service. I just know she wouldn't have wanted her death to have any negative impact on the environment, and since she fought so hard to beat her disease and live, a hi live healthily, it would be a shame to have her final moments to be counter to the way she lived. Of course, we'll happily oblige your request for no embalming in a closed casket. I thought she said to embalm her. Oh, right. No, it says no embalming. Okay, I'm an idiot. I can't read. Funeral's monthly. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. I really can't believe we have to write this one out, but since we said we'll answer your most popular questions, here we are, because this definitely is one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time, and we understand that, but here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at a funeral. Generally fall on the guidelines of don't be a jerk should work. Number one, don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but this is a time and place to disengage. If you have to be on your cell phone, don't do it inside the funeral home. Two, don't be loud and obnoxious. You can share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Being quiet gives other people the space they might need. Three, don't get drunk. Everyone can deal with their feelings in their own ways. Just remember to be respectful with the grieving family and friends. Happily reminisce. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the deceased can be a productive part of the healing process. Give condolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even a simple and thinking of you can go a long way. 6. Dress appropriately. What this looks like will change based on customs of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. 8. Give a sign or gift give a gift or sign the registration book. I'm trying to move this thing out of the way of my computer fan. This can be flowers or a nice car, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can even be cooking just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want them to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and helpful. All right, I didn't reply to this one, so I can reply. Sure thing, I'll get right to it. I meant to check the other browser thingy. <laughs> Rose and Daughters, here we are. Our services. Committed to providing loved ones with the best and most affordable funeral services in the area. We offer diverse range of personalized funeral services for every need. Burial with open casket and reception, burial with closed casket and reception, commission with ceremony and reception, direct burial with no ceremony and reception, all inclusive. Direct cremation with no ceremony or reception. Um, Rose and Daughters Funeral Home was founded by my grandparents back in 1956. The Rose family has proudly served the area since then, providing personal and affordable funeral services for all. I'm proud to have carried on my family's business for the last 36 years, working with the best and brightest funeral directors and grief counselors in the area. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you've recently experienced a loss and would like us to help you through this hard time. Good. Okay. Oh, for death positivity. So I'm like, I'm interested in what we do here. Okay, so. I like her little outfit. This is a prep room where you'll prepare bodies for burials and viewings. Oh, I'm getting surgeon simulator vibes here. As the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you're just going to clean the body. Click on the sponge and drag it over the body to clean it. Is this the sponge? Sponge. I'm literally cleaning a dead body in a video game. This is wild. That's it. You're done. Mrs. Garcia will be sent to Mike to take care of the dressing and put her in her casket. It's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's window. You're responsible for taking care of the deceased body, but it's also important to pay your respect to their loved ones. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlour. Oh, I'm all in black now. Oh, cute. Oh, look, a funeral. Oh. They look sad. I mean, it's a funeral. I hate wearing panty holes. My legs are so itchy, but it's always cold in these funeral homes. Okay. I think I might actually miss those sweater shoes to knit for me now. Oh. She would have hated these paintings. She was so particular. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. 
Yeah, I guess. Oh, I can talk to the kid. Yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming wears me out. Those chemicals leach into the ground. Seems strange to be using a chemical that is known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Alright. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do with the leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain. At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. Hee <laughs> hee, stop it. Don't make me laugh right now. Mommy, I'm hungry. When can we go? Fair. We usually don't take, don't small talk a lot of these things, at least that's what I was always taught. I always thought it'd be interesting to be a funeral director. I applied actually for a funeral home, um, not as a funeral director but as office staff and they didn't even do me the courtesy of our response. But like, I thought it'd be really interesting to work at a funeral home, but they obviously thought there was someone better than me for the job. Didn't even give us an interview, but you know. That's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Now I can apply and be like, excuse me, I played a mortician's tale, so I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm so frustrated right now. Can I rant for just a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers' colleagues, NMD cough, male colleagues cough, get on my case for wearing corsets. I wear them under my blazer over a nice blouse. It's not like I'm dressed inappropriately, even though the dress codes are such se sex as BS anyway. And like, I hate how their misogyny gets veiled in full concern. Jen, I'm just worried that you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to lovers, right? Corsets don't do anything to lovers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condescension is hurting my head. Ugh, sorry, I'm all out of sorts right now. I'll send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Oh right, that's why the time difference, because she's in London and I take it we're in America. <laughs> or somewhere. Okay, so let me explain this a bit more in detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight lacers lover specimen we have here at the museum. It's from a woman who died in 1907 and the liver is tapered inwards from what the doctor leading the autopsy believed was too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular and while people associated, associated it with fainting or hysteria, sigh, mood, it's actually been associated with visceropotent visceroptosis, which is where the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen, right? Which is super unsettling, but can also be caused by being pregnant, so... Till long, don't read. Corsets probably messed up some bones, but likely didn't, this, didn't do this kind of internal organ damage. And I'm tired of the condescension about my wardrobe that also implies I don't know what I'm doing. These are the kind of things I specifically research, and yet I'm treated like I know nothing about. I'm having a bad day, Char- Oh, I'm having a day, Charlie. Next job. Here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job in the first one. The family is very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly man, died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. P.S. Charlie, dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother to you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew. He knows. Amy, uh, please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job you did with with the dead with our mothers to know. It was really lovely. Our family really gets together. It was nice to have everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to bring us our own food in. Let us bring our own food in. God, I cannot read. Getting to share home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it meant a lot. What I'm saying is it was nice for everyone to be there like that, together in that way, and I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. Oh, A story about death. Oh, crikey. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on their last trip around town, and I was thinking, strange, I know, did I ever tell you about the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager, about to start university, and a friend of mine was killed in a car accident, totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me and my friends up real good. But so the big day, we all got into our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us, so we had at least three different cars full of us. Like clown cars, you know? While we were in the procession going to the cemetery, somebody in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out some asshat driver who doesn't know not to get in the way of a procession drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Nobody was hurt, thank God, but can you imagine getting that call? 
Anyways, one of my friends in the same car as me, the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in that way that makes you not sure if they're really crying or if they've just gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed. And then we all started giggling because, like, go figure, life is messed up sometimes, you know? There's no moral, no point to that story, I guess. I just remembered that story and wanted to tell you. Because we work with death all the time and I still sometimes get caught off guard by what that actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, that has nothing to do with why I became a funeral director. That decision came totally later. And it's nothing remarkable. Somebody has to do it and I have a strong stomach, so why not? I'll see you in a bit. I just realized she's got coffee. Can I click on it? No, okay. Funerals monthly. Oh my god, these are so lengthy. Um, let's skim it. How to be reflect reflect Leh, respectful. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean to more formal black attire rule and it works for us. Goes back to the days of the Roman Empire where people wear black as a symbol for mourning. For example, in Hinduism and Chinese cultures, white is the typical colour for funerals. I discovered that from which. For Islam, it's less about the colour you're wearing and more about how modestly you're dressed. Refrain from wearing any elaborate jewellery and be respectful of your behaviour. For Sikh funerals, colour of clothing isn't as important isn't as important as is dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral, no matter what. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what is and isn't, inappropriate, isn't appropriate to wear. If you're attending to support a friend, family member, or partner, this day is not about you. So be sure to do whatever you can to be respectful and supportive as possible, even if that means not wearing what you're used to wearing at a funeral, or even if it just means asking how you can appropriately show your respect. I'll get right on it. Okay, Mr. Duval, here I come. Got my scrubs on, ready for some formaldehyde. Traditional body oils require embalming, which preserves the body and prevents it from decomposing as quickly. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional burials will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. I should probably be respectful, like, you see them doing it in the hospital and they, like, do it really gently and I'm just like, we're cleaning you, Mr. Deval. <laughs> Ooh, we're shaving him, okay. My grandpa, like, um, shaved off his mustache randomly, like, two weeks or so before he died. Like, he just took this notion to shave off the mustache he'd had for his whole life. And then, at the cause, like, a lot of people at the funeral hadn't seen him since he cut off his mustache. People thought that the funeral home had shaved off his mustache and were like, oh my god, why would they do that? Like, it's such an iconic piece of who he is. Why would they shave his mustache? And we were like, no, he did it to himself. They were like, what? But he's had a mustache for like years. And I'm like, yeah, no, he did it to himself. And I was there at the time. He came through into the living room and he was like, what do you think? And we're like, go you, I guess. <laughs> really random, but just an interesting story about shaving dead people. Weirdly though, at this point, I can barely picture him without the mustache. Cause like, you know, oh my God. In order to break my grimoire, she'll have to massage the body. Ooh, okay. Um, do I just click? What do I do? Do I have to hold something? Ah, right, okay. It never occurred to me you have to break rigor mortis. This is really fascinating. Oh, Jesus, I don't like eyes. That would probably be... That would probably be the struggle for me. I don't like eyes. I don't like eyes at all. Oh, I don't like these. Crikey, you'll need to glue them shut. They glue them shut? I didn't know that either. <gasps> I'm learning so much. That, I mean, I suppose that makes sense, but that never occurred to me. Honestly, this must be so intriguing to do as a job. And it's like that thing, it's like you can't kill them, you know? They're already dead. So it's not really the same as like medicine, because it's like you're not trying to fix someone or save their life. You're just trying to make them presentable in death. Cotton ball. You'll need to sitter it shut. What is the sitter? This? This? That's a cannula. This? No. Oh, oh, this. Needle. My goodness. Lotion.
I'm against thing. Maybe I don't want to be embalmed. Maybe I should point this. Maybe I should say I don't want to be embalmed. This doesn't sound like fun. They're replacing it with preserving chemicals. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, why do you need this? Like, if you get them, I mean, yeah, okay, but like, just don't have an open casket funeral. I never really understand why anyone, like, I, obviously everyone agrees differently, but personally I've never understood, I've never been to an open casket funeral. I don't particularly want to see a dead body. If I'm, com like, <laughs> if I did it as my job, then sure, but like, if it was someone that I knew, I don't particularly want to see their dead body at the funeral. I would rather remember them the last time I saw them when they were alive, rather than my final memory of them being them dead in a box with their fucking eyes glued shut, like... All my family members like that have died, the last time I saw them, they were alive and breathing and smiling, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm quite happy with that. This sounds horrible. Chip for draining the blood. This... Ooh. Cannula. Where's the cartoid artery? Oh, here, okay. Connect the embalming machine. This thing? Where do I put it? Drag it to the cannula. I am! Oh, there we go. In order to evenly distribute the chemicals, just massage them to the body. Ugh. I still think it'd be cool to work at a funeral home. Maybe I'll drive the hearse though. I can't drive. But maybe if one day I do. I love this though. Fucking embalming simulator. Yeah, I don't think I want to be embalmed. This doesn't sound like a lot of fun. That thing I keep saying, it's like the idea of being buried or cremated both freak me out. And people are always like, but you'll be dead. I'm like, I'm aware of that, but I still don't like the idea. Like, it still freaks me out, even though I won't be aware of it. You know what I mean? I kind of want to give my body to medical science because that just seems like the most productive thing to do with my dead corpse. It's like I don't particularly want to be burned and scattered. I don't particularly want to be put in a box in the ground. So I'm like, if I give my body to medical science, they can like chop me up and use it for stuff. And that just seems like a more productive use of my body parts. You know what I mean? Like I'm on the own organ donors register, so you might as well just have the rest of it. You know, just chop it up and use it for stuff. Never bother putting it in the ground or whatever. Just use it for something. Run weird tests on it. I don't know. That just seems like a much more useful use of my dead body, you know? I need to drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Ooh, but what fluids are in them? Ugh. This thing? Ooh. Michael puts here Mr. Duval's makeup as well as dressing and put him in the casket. It's time to attend the funeral. Oh, okay. Came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, the next poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about it for too long, like staring at the sun. I start to feel a little fuzzy when I think about it. Mm, so weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah, yeah. It is weird. I find that really weird. And I read an interesting thing online about how people, like, the difficult way to define death because no one can really define what what death is like is it when your body organs stop working is it when your brain stops working and then they have like you know you've got brain death and physical death which are two separate things so your body can be functioning but your brain isn't working which means that you are dead but you're not because you're alive but you're not and it was like it's actually really difficult to to determine what is the exact point that someone stops being alive 
was very interesting but also really creepy the more I read and I was like how about no strange not seeing most people wearing white white oh I think it's different for different family members I can't remember I haven't gone to many traditional funerals so mostly white but like definitely not red no matter what is she Chinese because like red is like a celebratory color He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curve ball, that's for sure. What's this we did then? Humming to himself? Alright. Can I sign the guest book? I don't know. No, not by the looks of it. Today's to for a woman who died from breast cancer. Nothing fancy, just a standard cremation. Ooh, a cremation. Hi Amy, thank you for the wonderful evening you and your staff put together for my father's funeral. He wasn't always an easy man to get along with, but I'm glad to have seen him off in such a kind way. Aww. Meet cutes for death positive cuties. Charlie, I was doing some reading. I know you hate when I try to give you dating advice, but hear me out. There's this dating site that's, been specific, that's specifically for people working in the death industry. Okay, so maybe I'm a little worried for you. You haven't mentioned anybody new since the breakup of 2014 that we will never speak of again after this moment. But you're always saying how tired you get of people being scared to ask about your day. So maybe meeting someone in the industry isn't the worst idea. Just promise me you'll consider it, okay? It's harder for me to make sure you're seeing sunlight when I'm all the way across the ocean. I know you look like a babe with pale skin and the witchy gothy aesthetics are super hot right now, but vitamin D is still a good thing. Mum ran over. I'm going to try it out because turns out people get super scared off when you tell them you work in a museum filled with dead bodies. Do you know how not interesting other people find teratomas? Charlie, I didn't know we were this weird to outside people. I've been spoiled by having a best friend who's as much of a weirdo as I am. Miss you. Let's grab a bottle of wine for our next Skype date. P.S. If you sign up for dead meat, isn't that the best name for a death industry dating website? Tinder rules apply. You have to like me if you come across my profile or whatever. I'm not sure how it works just yet though. Can I go on the website? Will it let me? No. <laughs> Ooh, LGBTQ funerals, love it. Paycheck coming late. Fuck's sake, Amy. That's embarrassing, but it seems I miscalculate some real income and I don't have enough to pay you this week. Would it be terribly inconvenient if I cut you a check for next week instead? If you need the money urgently, please let me know. I feel terrible at this whole thing. I can cut you a check from a personal account if I need be. Aww. I don't like the look of this, not one bit. I know you've only been with us for a few months, but maybe you're aware of the trouble Amy has been having. A small mom and pop shop like Rose and Doris can't compete with the bigger guys. Anyway, don't tell Amy I sent this to you. Also, I'm starving, so I'm going to grab some fast food before taking the hairs to the car wash. Two birds, one stone. I'm swinging back to home. Do you want anything? A beef and cheddar. I'm going to take the hairs through the drive through of course. It freaks people out. I love it. They get so awkward. Let me know. I'm heading out in 15 minutes. Ooh, this one's about transgender people. Trans women have had their wishes overruled by families and have had their hair cut, are buried under the wrong names, and are subjected to the wrong pronouns in their obituary announcements. Ooh, gross. The CDC's funeral director's handbook on death registration and fetal death reporting offers the fraught directive. Enter male or female based on observation. Do not abbreviate or use other symbols. If sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records, inspection of the body or other sources, enter unknown. Do not leave this item blank. Leaving it up to observation obviously enters into a world of issues since bodies can be so different and because of ingrained bias, people can draw incorrect assumptions based on their own inaccurate observations. California's passed what's known as the Respect After Death Act, which states that the death certificate must reflect the deceased's gender identity as they left it, so a step in the right direction. I had no idea about any of that. People who are trans deserve the same respect in death that people in who are cisgender receive. Hell fucking yeah. Misgendering and death takes away this respect. It can also inflict hurt and trauma on spouses and friends that survive the deceased. Absolutely! That's disgusting! Imagine going to your loved one's funeral and everyone's fucking misgendering them and using their dead name. It, ugh, gross. So what can we do as funeral directors? Listen to the people who come into our office. In America, especially, some marriages may not be recognised as legal depending on the laws around same-sex marriage. But this doesn't mean you're not dealing with people who have loved each other in the same way as another couple. Listen, learn, and always be respectful. 
While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure that the deceased receives utmost respect in their burial. If a funeral is to honour the deceased, then do that. Honour them. Love it. So true. Okay, what are we doing? Oh, we're committing this lady. Oh, yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. See, that's just the idea of that, right? Horrifies me. And most people are like, oh, I would rather like be burned than in the box in the ground because if you're in a box in the ground and then like the zombie the zombie apocalypse happens you will be raised from the dead but i'm like no say be honest neither i just don't like the thought of either i don't like the thought of being put in a box in the ground and i don't like the thought of being put in a box and shoved into a furnace like i just don't like either and i'm like you know it's my body and i don't want either of those things to happen to it it's just a big nope for me dog mrs hall's family brought clothing and jewelry for her to wear it's important for these cremation process not to damage them. But that's the thing as well, is it's like I get dressing them up for burial, but when you dress them up you're just burning their clothes. I don't know, I find the whole thing odd. Let's start by- oh, do we take them back off? Do, oh, do we not burn her in the clothes? I thought maybe we burned her in the clothes. I don't really know enough about this. I'm like, it'd be so cool to work in a funeral home, I don't know fucking anything about death and embalming. There we go. The identification tag. Ooh. Well, yeah, I suppose... I suppose we do want to be able... Oh, so we took off our necklace, but we're burning on the dress. I guess we do want to be able to identify the remains. Oh, yikes. Oh, I just don't like it. I just don't like cremations. I don't like the concept. Mm, not a fan. Not a fan. And I'm not sure what's better for the environment. Because people keep talking about that. It's like we're running out of space on the ground to bury dead people. But burning people is just putting like dangerous gases into the atmosphere. So it's not really going to work either way, you know? doesn't turn bodies into ash so much as bone fragments. Huh. Using the cremulator will break those bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Oh. Oh, okay. Is that what they do? So does it burn away your skin and your, like, flesh and organs and shit and leave your skeleton and then they crush the skeleton through, like, a... like a blender? Oh, that's so... Oh. Wow, okay. Drop them into the... Oh my god. Wee! <laughs> Wee! Oh shit! <laughs> Return the... Back onto the counter. Back into the urn. Wait, we're putting the necklace in the urn? Don't they want to keep it? Oh, weird, okay. I thought they'd want to keep the necklace, but no, we're putting it in the urn for some reason. Amy will take it to the funeral parlour. When I went, um, my family went to scatter my grandpa's ashes, my little cousin was there, and she would have only been literally like, well, I was 14. So she must have been about Sorry, my math is poor. She's she's eight years younger than me. So if I was fourteen she would have been like six. Um and we were standing there and they were scattering my grandpa's ashes and she says what is that stuff that they're putting on the ground? <laughs> and my aunt, my aunt who's not her mother, my other aunt, another aunt, was like, oh, maybe you should ask your mum that after we're done. And you know that way she just looked so awkward, like she had no idea what to do. And I just kind of internally laughed because I was like, it's just, it's just the innocence of kids, isn't it? Like, how do you explain to a child what we're looking at, you know? Like... But it just kind of makes me laugh when I think of it. It's like, what are they scattering? It's like, um, <laughs> uh, anyway, bone fragments, apparently. 
Um, okay, let's go talk to the family. Glad she was cremated and not like in an open casket or something. Seen her like that? I don't know if I could have. Exactly, same. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would have liked that. What's he doing with his hands? That's nice in a weird way. She'd like that we're all here talking. She always tries to keep the family together. The food is delicious. I know that's weird, but these crab cakes are perfect. I mean, sure. I completely appreciate I appreciate good food no matter where you are. That's what I say. I'm sure Grandma would want you to enjoy your food. She fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up, not once. Oh, that's right. We don't know how old this lady is because she died of cancer. She would have hated this music. She never wants her funeral to be sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. Big agree. Big agree. I keep joking that like when they like at my funeral, I mean if I go to dedicate my body to science I won't get a funeral but if I have a funeral I want them to play like um like bring me to life because I just think it'll be ironic um you know so like be like <laughs> they bring in the coffin with like my body in it or whatever and then it's like wake me up inside <laughs> bring me to life <laughs> I just think that would be really fun Either that or just something really daft. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, it went out of business! Wait, what? We only did like three procedures. Hi all, it's with a very heavy heart that I write to let you know that Rose and Daughters will no longer be in business. I had no idea how to start this email and resources. I googled told me that it would be best and easiest way to break the ice. Be direct but remorseful, Google said. The truth is I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and Daughters warm and friendly to anyone who chose to use our services. It was my memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways. And you've all become like family, including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighbourhood and I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, large corporations than we are that can take on more business and offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. So we've been bought, or I sold. Either way, soon Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated, a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country, will replace Rose and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name. They're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral Home for tax purposes. Though honestly, shit. Um, I'm trying hard not to just see it as a move on their part to keep up the image that it's a family-run business. I don't know how I feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. I've signed the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact somewhat. You have a good reputation have agreed to keep you all on oh look there's a different page um that was one of my stipulations i would sell as long as you weren't all without a job sorry i didn't tell you in a more personal way i would have loved to have a company lunch but i admittedly i didn't have the heart to tell you in person this was easier for me please understand i'm eternally grateful you were able to accommodate our request for my sister's funerals beautiful service and she would have been happy with it that's such a weird thing to say isn't it thank you again from the bottom of my heart Oh, pacemaker. You were asked you asked if there are any special instructions. Just please create my father. He has a pacemaker too. The doctor told me that would need to be removed. Ooh, they can be tricky. Ooh, fun. Ryan Garcia. I know this email might be a bit odd, but you said if I was ever having troubles I should reach out and you would know someday I could talk to about all of this. I just I don't know what to do now. I know my grandmother lived a full good life and she was very happy and that she's not in pain now. But I still, I feel empty, Amy. I've never felt this empty before. What am I supposed to do now? I thought I was stronger than this. Can you refer me to someone to talk to? I don't want to freak my mom out right now. She's dealing with enough with work in the well and trying to just be the best mom she can. I just need somebody to tell me that it'll be okay. Aww. Why is he sending at three in the morning? I thought I'd forward this to you. In situations like this, we typically connect people like Ryan with a grief counsellor or other professionals who can really help him. Sometimes we get emails like this and people don't know where else to turn. It's difficult and family isn't always the most reliable for some people. Usually I'd be happy to connect them but I'm feeling a little tired today. Not my usual self and it would be good for you to start building these kinds of relationships on your own. A challenger approaches. What? Charlie, I've been playing a new game when things are slow at work. It's called Tales from the Crypt Sweeper. Oh, that's what that is. It's like Minesweeper but way harder. <laughs> like seriously, it's really, really difficult and I thought my Minesweeper game was on point after working that overnight front desk job at that hotel for three years. Oh my god, that was me. I used to have this job where like quite a lot, like sometimes I would be swamped and other times I would have absolutely nothing to do like all day 
and I taught myself to play Minesweeper. Like I went online and read all these guides on how to play Minesweeper. <laughs> I also taught myself how to do those sliding block puzzles, like the ones that you get in the little like plastic squares and you slide the like picture around. Taught myself to do them. You can teach yourself a lot of things when you're at work and you've got fuck all to do. So I completely relate. Anyways, instead of mines, you want to avoid graves so you don't disturb the adorable ghosts. The main character also <laughs> kind of looks like you. Want to start a healthy competition? The high score gets to pick the restaurant we go to and one of us is in town next. Um, this is about the environment. Natural cemeteries are becoming more popular. Focus on a few rules. Mainly it's that bodies aren't allowed to be embalmed with chemicals that can damage the environment and bodies must be buried in biodegradable, biodegradable shroud or casket. Not only is this better for the environment, it's also cheaper. Natural burial is only $1,000. Better for the people, better for the environment, just maybe not so good for big business. <laughs> but really, why go green? Green burials help with our natural resources, work to reduce carbon emissions, and protect the health of those preparing bodies to rest and restore and preserve natural habitats. Yeah, see, I'm all on board with this. Contain formaldehyde and funeral directors report higher incidence of leukemia. Oh my god, I didn't know that. Not using toxic chemicals when farming. Why are we using fucking formaldehyde then if it's making folk ill? Like, what? Oh my god, look at it. Um, wait, what do these mean? What do these mean? Shit. <laughs> like how am I supposed to know what these mean? Fucking hell. <laughs> okay, we gotta figure out what to do with this pacemaker now. Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital, so we won't have to worry about removing any valuables from him as the family did not provide any for us to include. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker we'll need to remove for cremation. Because pacemakers are batteries, they will explode inside the hot of the cremation machine and we definitely don't want that. No! No we don't! That sounds terrible! Can you imagine, can you actually imagine having to tell someone that their family member exploded in the cremation machine? Oh my god! <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever heard! Okay, Mr. Baez. Do we not want to seal that up? I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? they just like swing so dramatically like why are the bones doing this we always look on the bright side of death Do -do. Here we go. I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me, but I don't know. He never seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. Wow! Dark. Did you ever end up cleaning the air with your father? No, we talked a few times, but no, not really. He sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it. Stubborn. What do you want to do after this? It's pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere. Sounds good. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you the time we tailgated? I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me, so that figures. Damn.
Look at her cleaning her behinds. She's so cute. I just want to thank you for the service the other- what the fuck? For the service the other month. I apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. Aww. Oh. 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 What? Disregard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket if you're not. As for payment, we'll bring a cheque. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront this situation. Yeah, anyways, they're never easy. Rose and Daughters has been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for cremation, but the family has demanded a traditional burial instead. Unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney and he didn't have any witnesses sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes, so his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do as his family wishes. Matthew has graciously offered to take this on if you're uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for a holster funeral or hosting later in the afternoon. Charlotte, is this suicide something you're comfortable dealing with? <sighs> I mean... That's a difficult one because I do feel like it's like the family are obviously struggling with this. And they, you you do have to think about them too. And it's not it's not as bad as the one earlier where it was like misgendering people and stuff. Like they just want to give him an open casket funeral, but he didn't want that. But he's not around to. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, meh. I'll probably say I'm not comfortable because like I'm I'm not comfortable with the family doing that. But at the same time, I can understand the like why. I think it's arseholy. But I also can understand that, you know, at the end of the day, funerals aren't really for the people that we've lost. It's for the ones that are left behind. Um, you know, they are the ones that are there to pick up the pieces and they are the ones that are there to say their goodbyes and all that, you know. So I can kind of get it. But their email is also so incredibly abrupt and arsehole that I'm just about like, mm, shut the fuck up. I'll say I'm not comfortable because I'm intrigued. As to what happens if I say no. Um, you hate mushrooms so much. Oh, I love mushrooms. I found the perfect thing for you. I've been thinking about death. I know, shocker. Look what you've done to me. I think this mushroom. I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it. And I'm writing you on my phone, so I don't feel like googling it right now. Anyways, the idea is that a biodegradable, biodegradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made from what people call biomix, i.e. mushrooms and other microorganisms that help to decompose bodies, neutralize toxins in the body, and provide nutrients for the soil for plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for use in green caskets. I think this is what I want. I will just like Hannibal. Wait, don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. I love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something we're in the ground, you know? Love you. Think about it and then let me know your thoughts. I want all of your thoughts, if not if it's not this, then maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewellery. But seriously, I'm probably going to do this. There's no harm in planning ahead, right? I would love to be buried in the thing of mushrooms. I fucking love mushrooms. Um, what not to say at a funeral? At least they're no longer suffering. Even if this is true, nobody wants to hear this and it's probably not your place to dictate. Who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best? Like I said, even if it's true, don't be that, don't be that jerk and just don't say it. I never thought of that. I've actually never thought of that. I always thought that was a kind thing to say, but you're right, that is not great. Were they saved? Yeah, fuck that. No religious statements, just don't. Why? Because not everyone agrees with your religious views, and not only is it not always comforting, it can also be insulting. Three. They're with the angels now. See above note, then rinse and repeat. Yeah. I, like, I be like, as much as I'm an atheist, I believe in an afterlife. I don't think that religion and the afterlife are, have to be connected i think they are mutually exclusive entities but the idea when people are like oh they're with the angels i'm like shut the fuck up shut up like i hate that phrase and i'm like there's no such thing as angels like in my opinion and i'm like when people say that to me i'm actually like shut up <laughs> shut up like oh fly high with the angel shut up let me know how i can help 
This one is tricky. You want to hope that those in mourning won't always ask for help. If you want to help, suggest specific things. Like, I'm free if you need something to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them, take them to their favourite restaurant, or buy tickets to see a movie together. I'm always... I never know about that one either, because it's like... At the same time, you don't want to seem like you're being, like, too much. So, like, if you phone them up and you're like, hey, I got us, like, I booked us your favourite restaurant, they might be like, I don't want to go to a restaurant. Like, my family member just died. What is wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, it's really hard. People just don't know what to do when someone's died. And it's, it's completely fair because even if you've been through it, you've got absolutely no idea how the next person's going to react. So it's a really difficult situation. I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, everyone grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people want to hear your experiences but don't assume they will. Ask first. For a quicker version of this list that can apply to any situation, don't say stuff just for the sake of saying stuff. Just say I'm sorry if you don't know what else to say. Open casket for no. Oh wait, I thought it was not, but I'm not, I'm massaging. I wonder what would have happened if I'd taken that boy's for no. These eye cap things, I just hate, I hate the sound of that. I really do. I just hate eyes. Like, contact lenses freak me out, so. Um. Yeah, contact lenses freak me out, so eye cap things, definitely not my style. Okay, why can't I click? What's going on? Oh, fuck. I thought it said massage the body. It says moisturize. God, I'm so fucking stupid. Oh, shit. I thought I was doing it there, but I wasn't. I still really like this music, it's really nice. Okay. Off to the funeral we go. She's no longer suffering or in pain. Yeah. She's a better place now. Hmm. She was too good for this world. Okay, thanks, Aunt Sandy. Yeah, exactly. Everything they told you not to say. 
I haven't cried since she died, not once. How is Anna crying, not me? I'm the one who lost a parent. Where is Maria? She couldn't be here. She didn't want to see her mother's body. I mean, I don't blame her. Anyway, I'm pretty impressed with the food. Did you try the amaretti? It's quiet sobs. Oh. It doesn't look like her at all. No, I'm not surprised. I like her little footsteps. Okay, what's next? Wonderful hear anything about that boy. She should probably take her gloves off before touching her computer screen. I'm just just pointing that out. <laughs> oh, okay. We are pleased to bring on Rose and Daughters as part of Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. They will be another institution among hundreds of other properties owned across the country. But of course, as part of the adjustment process to Hillside Heritage Enterprises culture, there will be a number of changes that will come to Rose and Daughters. We'll send out the memo regarding the specifics and details of these changes and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Glad to be leading the way from Rose and Daughters from now on. Chad. Can I say first off, this is bill crap. Ugh, knowing these corporations run, I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring our emails now. No, okay, I really don't believe that. I'm just upset. I get that you don't have much of a choice. You can only fight a huge corporation taking all your business taking all your business for so long. This isn't six feet under. And they just swooped in and now we have to deal with their BS practices. They're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this much for funerals? It feels dirty and exploitative. Let's grab a, grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam and emails aren't really the most appropriate place to do this. Too late for me, I guess. P.S. If you're reading this, Hillside Overlord. Good. Um, Charlotte. Lower the details for our next client. Ensure you follow the request specifications exactly. After you're done, I will review your work and I'll just properly evaluate you at the end of the month. The bike accident was well, it was more than I was expecting. I know she wanted to be cremated and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. I can't really write too much right now. I have a lot of work to do with an in what does that say? Inguinal hernia from 1750s. The oldest son in our collection. You have to you can even see this bit of paper the surgeon put in after removing the hernia. Super cool, I'll send you the link when we have it catalogued. What is my life? What is that sentence I just typed? But anyway, this event I'm looking, I'm forwarding you, it's taking place near you. Figured you'd be into it. May, might help with that feeling of restlessness you were talking about before. Could be good to talk about some of the things you're feeling. Lots of death positive people there, sounds like it'll be a safe space. Come and inc increase awareness of death with a view of helping people make the most of their finite lives. Join us, have tea and cake. And talk with others about our thoughts, fears, and illuminations on death. The founder of the Death Cafe movement, John Underwood, once said, When people talk about death and dying, it tends to illustrate their humanity. Oh, cute. Tea and cake sounds nice. Funeral rites. In Judaism, interment usually begins after somebody has passed. Up until burial, the body is never supposed to be alone, so often families will appoint a shomer guardians who remain with the body. Preparations for burial begin as soon as possible in Muslim, Muslim traditions as well. Yeah, I had a staff member, um, the last place I worked, who died and he died on like, I can't remember, I think he died over the weekend and by the time that they announced it to the staff on Monday he'd already been buried so they couldn't like put it out to the staff to come to the funeral because they buried him like pretty much the next day or something it's it was really impressive actually how quickly they turn around in burials in, in Muslim communities local Islamic community organizations are often also often involved in help the family make arrangements for funeral service and burial not all practices are st strictly religiously focused South Korea, the amount of graveyard space began to shrink drastically, causing a law to be passed to require families to move, remove a loved one's body from its burial after 60 years. Oh, wow. Companies can compress remains into beads in turquoise, pink, or black called death beads. That sounds really good. I mean, the problem is you might lose it, but it's, that sounds really nice. Turning of the bones are Fama Dehana, Malagasy people of Madagascar. Families returning to the ancestral crypt exhume the body wrapped in cloth before dancing with the body to lively music. 
Is that like the guys from that video? The um... Oh, I can't think of the tune now, but you know the one I mean, the like the, the four guys dancing with a coffin on their shoulders. Because I love that video, but I can't think of this tune now. There isn't a beauty, doesn't mean there isn't beauty in the ways we honour and celebrate our deceased. Hell yeah, right, Hellside Heritage. Bronze funeral package, intimate gathering, customised by influence, silver funeral package, small but special celebration, best suited for groups of 50 to 100. Gold funeral package, give your loved one the best we have to offer. Payment plans available, groups over 100. Rose and Daughters is the newest funeral home to join Hillside Heritage, proudly serving 56 different communities nationwide since 1964. Rose and Daughters features several pa available packages for burials and cremations and spacious visitation suite for added comfort and catering available on site. Rely on our dedicated and friendly staff to help you with your funeral needs, whether you need immediate assistance for a loved one or would like to pre-plan your own funeral arrangements. I'll get right to it. Whatever you say, boss. I and Esco. She looks young. That was an easy one. Bye, Miss I and Esco. Wait, what? Oh, right, my arm. I forgot about my arm. I was like, what do I do? General package did these people buy? Should we do a vigil at the spot? Careless drivers, I swear to god. Oh no. Oh, she did say it was a bike accident, didn't she? She was also careful, wore a helmet, signaled, used the bike lanes, asshole drivers, they need to pay attention. Have you heard what's happening to the driver? I haven't I haven't wanted to ask Leah. This has been hard enough on them without asking all the legal ramifications. After all this, let's see if we can do help them. Shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. I'm not crying, it's the hay fever. Genuinely. I have to go through all of her things. I'm supposed to say what to keep. If you need help, I can help. No, thanks. I mean, but no, I don't know. It's so intimate. It feels like I should do it myself. Should we should we kill me if others saw the things we have? She was kind of a closed book except to you. Yeah, she was special. I'm glad I'm here, but wow, I just need a glass of wine and to binge watch something right now. So glad it was a cremation, I would have lost it seeing her body. Oh, I mean, she looked alright to me, but... Alright, let's see what news we get from our new bosses. God, my eyes are so itchy. This fucking hay fever is absolutely doing me in this year. Oh, look, she's watching her little plan. Oh, Okay, what is this fuck? Say to previous email, here are the new rules and code of conduct. I expect you to follow from now on while on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage Enterprises. First and foremost is require uniform and strict grits code from now on. Oh god, second most importantly to this is no tattoos are to be visible. If you have visible tattoos, ensure they are properly covered and hidden. And speaking with customers and clients, consider the opportunity to upsell. Oh god! Always encourage to see loved ones purchase the higher quality package. No! Gross! Encouraging loved ones to think about the comfort and style of the deceased and experience with no price limit on it. Well, yeah. Additionally, food is no longer allowed to be brought in. Instead, we encourage the deceased loved ones to publish the premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Her partner catering concerts uh, is high quality food, blah blah fucking blah. Oh gross. I hate it. Change the name of the company, stop doing this. Oh wait, I didn't read Matthew's response. 
I need a drink, be after work. Also, I really want mozzarella sticks. I can be both hungry and angry, and no, I will not say hangry ever. Shut up, Matthew. Hangry is a great word. Refuse your request on behalf of the potential family and crying if we get hillside home. Blah, 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 blah. Green burials. I should have informed you of this at the beginning, but we do not perform green funerals as they are not cost effective. All employees and subsidiaries of Hillside Heritage Enterprises must comply. We do not wish to lose potential customers, though, so do try your hardest to convince the family to request green burials to choose instead the traditional burial package. But I'm proud to announce the Hillside Heritage Enterprise received a contract with the city to dispose of any unclaimed bodies. An important revenue stream for us, I'm sure I don't need to explain to you. Being paid a decent wage for the city for these services, cremation is referred to as the most cost efficient. The first unclaimed body will be handled once a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body is yet to be claimed. Alright. I just saw a video of a gorilla walking on its hind legs, like a human being, Charlie, a human being. We as a species have seen the beginning of our end. Home funerals. Wasn't that long ago we were taking care of our own deceased, but nowadays people are quite to pass off their loved ones to a funeral home. Most families aren't given the option and assume this is mandatory. Funeral homes will almost always prepare the deceased using embalming and other methods to make them appear more alive. But isn't this process counterintuitive to the grieving process? Fuck. Being around the deceased allows the bereaved to spend a longer period of time with their loved one's body which can help them mourn or give opportunities to family and friends to see the deceased one last time. The idea of keeping the deceased body at home might sound gross, but it's important to understand that decomposition takes a long time, and you can further slow this process by keeping your home cool and dry. To be around your loved ones and see them decay naturally is an important part of the, the grieving process. They aren't just more intimate, they're economical. A traditional funeral, complete with body cremation, blah 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 blah, upwards of $7,000 to $10,000. Different rules apply depending on what state you're in. Make sure you follow everything by the book. I think someone I know did that. Um, I'm sure they brought the body home. I don't really know much about it because it's not someone that I'm close to. Um, some that I was close to, but we weren't close by the time that it happened. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they brought the, the body home. He doesn't seem to have any valuables on him that would be damaged, so let's just work with the identification kind of. Okay. Identification tag, but we don't even have an identification for him. We don't know his name. Okay. Oh, right. I keep doing stuff in the wrong order and then wondering why the game isn't, like, going for it. My laptop's getting really warm, I have the feeling it, I'm scared it's going to overheat. I might pull the plug out of it. Present it alongside some flowers. Look, no, oh, there's no one here. I wonder why they even had the service. I suppose they didn't really, it's just sitting there, isn't it? Clip clop, clip clop. We are thrilled to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprises subsidiary Rose and Daughters just signed a contract with the Morning Valley Hospital allowing us a access to all of the cadavers that come through the paediatric and maternity wards. Receives over 15 million in funding. Oh, okay. Ooh. I see you were not able to convince the D'Amica family to take a standard funeral. I had to contact them myself in order not to lose a sale. Please read the enclosed emails for a lesson on how to properly upsell to customers. You refuse to upsell, that's part of your job. Fuck you, Chad. I understand your desire to keep your wife at home, but I assure you the best way to honour your wife is through a traditional funeral package instead. I promise you, your wife's funeral with us will be a beautiful, intimate gathering where all of our beloved friends and family can come together and say their goodbyes. 
Standing in bombing wall, I've everyone to view your wife, ensuring that everyone can see her one last time as she was beautiful, peaceful, courageous. Shut up! What? My daughters and I would still prefer to post a film through ourselves and keep my wife here until she's ready to be buried. I just don't- I just want to make sure she's taken care of. Her heart attack was so sudden we don't know what to do. Fuck you, Chad. Ooh. Charlie, it's official. I put in my two weeks notice. You know how unhappy I am working for Mega Corporation 101. My skills, especially my driving ones, are useful in other professions. I'm not worried about myself. But you, you I am worried about. You're too good for this corporate scum. You actually care about the people you work with and for. Don't let them defeat you, okay? P.S. I'll bring beers over next week. We can talk about it more freely. Dating a special effects makeup artist and she's like the coolest person I've ever met in my life. She totally loves Ava's possession and was equally freaked out by the possession scenes, but so utterly delighted at the idea of a support group for people who've been possessed. This was your best recommendation in a while, Charlie. You were slipping there. I was getting worried you'd lost your taste. But yeah, her name is Lily and she's super death positive and isn't freaked out by my work and also isn't too in into it like the last dude I saw. Jason, Michael, guy, I can't remember. I just like really like spending time around her. I can talk about whatever I want. It's never a conversation stopper. She also totally gets what I mean when I say that like one working with death and spending so much time thinking about death actually makes me happier. It makes everything else feel so worth it, you know? Memento Mori or whatever they taught us in that one poetry class we took. We just clicked. Feels good. Fun and affirming like dating should be. I'm thinking of taking her to Maple Meadows. She's not super into roller coasters and I think the idea of sharing a cotton candy or not. Maybe I, I, maybe not. I don't want her to throw up on the rides. It's secondly cute. Then maybe I'll kiss her on the top of a Ferris wheel. Be super corny and cliche for once in my life. Anywho, enough about me. I'm still kind of in shock from your last email. Do you think you're going to do it? You know my, my support 100% no matter what you decide. Ooh, is that what she's going to do? Is she going to register her own friend home? Um, alkaline hydro, hydro, hydrolysis? Hydrolysis? Hydrolysis. Whatever you want to call it is here and it's an environmentally friendly suggestional creation. Let's call it water cremation. Basically a water based chemical process that uses really strong alkali in water heating up very high. It basically works like a sped up version of natural decomposition. The excess water gets put through the same water treatment process as any sewage water at a factory and alkaline hydro hydrolysis uses significantly less energy than traditional cremation processes. Neat, huh? That sounds good to me. Register your business. Funeral services. Yeah, she's going to try and register her own funeral business. Yeah, Charlie. Fucking hell yeah. Because this company sucks. I miss Amy. Oh, that's not right. Sponge.
Who Mike did that say? Is he our new guy? Here we go. Why do these things always make me so hungry? You're always hungry. I mean, fair. Me too. It's so cold in here. I think they have the air conditioner on too high. Let's go for a walk later. It's really nice out. We get to stretch my legs. Did we do the right thing? I feel bad not doing what my mom for. I know, honey, but what that chat guy said seems right. We don't want to dishonor her memory by letting her rot. Yeah, I just want mom to know I loved her. I wish I hadn't yelled at her before. She knew you loved her. Fights happen. Please don't be hard on yourself. Yeah, I'm gonna miss her. Me too. I feel so impersonal. She would have hated this. I don't, but I don't know. They must have had their reasons. What do you think that trailer I sent you? Oh, I heard that show was so good. I saw the video of the one kid actor doing karaoke. Sorry, we didn't respect your wishes, darling. Blame the mega corporation. August. Oh, look. She's got her own place and there's butterflies on the wall. Charlie, dear, I'm so proud of you. I know there was something special in you when I hired you for Rose and Daughters. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. P.S. I sorely miss you and Matthew's terrible sense of humour. You'll never believe what new job I'm working now. Open this email to find out. When I first became a hairdresser, driver, I was told that my most important job wasn't steering, it was sympathising. I respectfully disagree and thankfully I concentrated on my driving skills since I'm now working as, wait for it, a bus driver. A school bus driver, Charlie. Can you believe that? Pretty sure if I said the most important part of my job now wasn't steering, I'd be fired immediately. I don't know how else to tell you. For some reason I was worried you'd think less of me. I don't know why. You've never been the judgmental kind. And besides, corpses are way easier to deal with than children. Screaming children, I might add. I actually love it. These kids can be pretty cute, but don't tell Amy I told you that. She was always harping on at me for not having any kids and being all cynical about them. Congrats on your new business, Charlie. I'm proud of you. I'll swing by your new place one day and show you my new wheels. Maybe we can grab a bite to eat. Be seeing you. Matthew. Congratulations on your new business. Charlie, I'm so happy for you. I know it's been a rough year for you. Seriously, I think our wine intake saw a bazillion percent increase. But you stuck it, stuck through it all like a champ. You deserve this. Finally being your own boss is a great move for you. No more having to explain everything you don't want to do. Anything you don't want to. I'm trying not to be too cheesy right now. Can't wait to be home next week for our visit and to check out your new space. P.S. Have you heard about those green burial pods? When I find the link in my one million open tabs, I'll shoot it over to you. Dear Charlie, today's the day already, isn't it? I can't believe how quickly this has come up. Thank you for understanding and your work. You've made today easier already. See you at 1pm. Magnolia Forest. Natural Burial Park. Magnolia Forest, named after the magnolia trees that surround the funeral home, specialises in, in, in at-home funerals and green burials in our natural burial park. Our goal is to empower families and encourage them to have a closer relationship with death and the dying process. The death of a loved one can be confusing and sometimes dramatic time and we want you to feel fully involved in your loved one's death care decisions. Whether you're looking to care for your loved one from the comfort of your home, be present during their cremation or bury them in your natural cemetery, in our natural cemetery, Magnolia Forest is here to work with you and provide these simple but intimate and meaningful options. Our natural burial park allows the body to return to the earth and recycle naturally. It is intended as an environmentally sustainable alternative to existing funeral practices. Our park has room for bodies of all shapes, sizes and ages, as well as beloved pets. Families also have the option to bury their loved ones themselves if they so choose. Oh look, they're cheap as well. Infants buried at no charge. Oh wow, yay. I'll see you soon, Eileen, whoever you are. Look at our cute little office. And she can show off her tattoos and no one's stopping her. Oh look! This hurts. I thought it'd be easier but it's not. It hurts so much but thank you for helping me give her the funeral she always wanted. Anyway, I think we're ready to get started now. Oh, and they're actually like burying them themselves. Like they're digging the plot and everything. so good oh that was lovely oh hell yeah you guys well done 
Well done. They all got good funerals too. Thank you for making it, Laundry Bear. Aww. That was really lovely, and now I'm emotional. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Thank you, people who made that. That was really awesome. I really enjoyed it. Um. But that's it for this.